Coming up in today's video, we delve into the art of desert basing. This will include using textures, painting, and the positioning of shrubs. This technique is incredibly easy for any modeler to follow and something that will make the basing process a little more enjoyable. Let me know at the end of the video what basing tutorial you'd like to see next. Hi guys, welcome back to my latest video. Um, as the title suggests, we're going to be looking at some desert bases. So with all the hype around the um, new series SES Grog Heroes, I thought it would be good to dust off some of the LRDG that I've I've painted up, um, or SES, whatever you want to go with, um, uh, that just need basing. So these have been sitting in my drawer for a few years now. Oh. Oh, a year and a half at least um, and they definitely need some attention so I thought let's get this basing done and let's get it done in a pretty quick manner um, and hopefully it will also be of some use to some of you so stick around and we'll get straight to it okay so the first thing you want to do is put down some sort of texture or green stuff or putty um, around the base and try and get in between the legs of the model um, just to try and hide this metal base. Some of the new Battlefront bases have holes already cut out, which is really handy, but I'm using the old style base here, so that's okay. We can play around with that. That's why we're using these textures um, to get that. I'm out of my normal texture, which is just a Vallejo white sort of texture, so I'm going to use my um, Soil Effect Dark Earth. I would, wouldn't really recommend this, but this is all I've got at the moment, other than my desert texture that we'll be using a bit later. So... Um, whatever you can get used, this is just to fill in uh, where the base of the model meets the base that it's going to be sitting on. So just use an old brush for this. You can use whatever you want to use. There's all kinds of different tools for this, but you just want to smother it on just to get that base covered. So you're probably thinking, oh, you don't want to be using this because it's, it's, to me, uh, textures is... Um, they can be quite expensive, but for the sake of this little video and the fact there's only a few bases, I don't really mind using it. And it's been sitting in my cupboard for quite a few months now, so I'm worried it's going to start drying out. So I might as well get some use out of it, opposed to just waiting to buy new stuff. So because we're doing the desert, you want to try and flatten as much of it down as possible now obviously desert sand it has uh, ripples and and waves um, so you, a few little bumps and that's okay but you don't want anything too irregular so next comes the tricky part where I just want to get in between his feet just because I don't want it this is obviously textured so it's going to be a bit gritty and if I just leave the base untouched, you're going to notice that it's a base. And there's one thing that I personally dislike when I'm basing my models is seeing the base that the model stands on. There's some people out there that have painted some exceptional models and then when they've based them, they don't hide the base of the models. And I just think, you know, for the sake of a few extra minutes, it makes all of the difference and if you've spent all that time painting such a great model and then you you sort of go a bit lazy on the basing um, you're not doing yourself any favors but that's just my opinion obviously it's um, comes down to personal preference and taste and some people probably like to see the base just so you know everyone knows it's a it's a toy not a well, I don't know. So you could use all sorts of tools here. I'm just using a toothpick because it's cheap. I don't have to buy any fancy tool to get the job done. And I'm just trying to get in all of the, the areas around his boot and that. Okay, so that's one done. So just proceed to do it uh, the same with the rest of them. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention just quickly is it is good practice to put cuts in uh, the actual base just so the texture can uh, adhere to the base better. I haven't done that um, purely because I forgot. Uh, but yeah, I would um, 
absolutely recommend doing that because sometimes it might struggle to adhere this this to me is stuff's pretty good though it will stick down pretty easily so don't be worried if you forgot um, but yeah I'll definitely do that okay so now we can look at painting the bases there's just one thing that I wanted to say before and make sure you let this cure for a while because it stays it might seem hard on the top but underneath it can still be quite soft so let the texture cure and then we can paint the bases so i waited overnight for these so about 24 hours um, and now i'm going to paint it the reason i'm going to paint it is because the next texture i'm using is a sand color so i don't want this dark color to come through i want it to be a sandy color already so for that i'm going to use vallejo dark sand it doesn't really matter what you use as long as you're using some form of sandy color Okay, so once the paint has dried, we then want to add some little rocks. Um, and I use this, uh, it's like bits of cork, um, all cut up. I think the army painter used to sell this a long time ago. I'm not sure who has it anymore, but yeah, any type of like little rock. Um, and what I do is I just put a little bit of glue on like a, just a palette or something, just a little bit of super glue, get a pair of tweezers and just Dab a few down. I'm trying to make these look like they're in the desert. Oh, this one's got a bit stuck. Hence, I'm not doing too much craziness with the rocks and such. Just, just a few little ones. So I want it to mainly be sand. So once you've done these, I'm pretty happy with the colour of these already. I think the cork actually looks really good, but I'll give them a dry brush later. But next, what we want to do is want to add some of the Tamiya Diorama texture. So this is the light sand. Now this is going to be great for looking like the desert sand. So we're going to put this over the base now. So this stuff is really runny. Um, in terms of for a texture um, so you might need a couple of coats but you should only need two coats at, at most and then just like we did with the previous texture just put it on don't be afraid if you get some on the boots or Obviously try not to get too much on the booze, but if you get a little bit on the booze and that, that's okay, it's not the end of the world. Um, when I give it a dry brush later, I like to give the boots a quick dry brush as well, just to make it look like they've been, they've got a little wear and tear on them. And you'll see this will start to come in into its own soon really look the part obviously I'm making quite a mess here but we'll tidy all this up so don't worry about that and then as we did before I'm just going to use my trusty toothpick just to get in all the difficult lots of reach places Again, just let that one dry. 
So we've let that first coat dry and I normally give it about 24 hours just like the other one um, but it's up to you just as long as it's dry you'll, you'll know you'll be able to tell. Um, so I've waited that 24 hours once it's dry I've then gone around and filed off the excess just use traditional file it's up to you how you want to get it off it's pretty easy um, it doesn't leave too much mess either. Uh, just use an old brush just to sweep up all the old old bits. Um, so as you can tell, there still needs to be another coat. There's some little holes that have opened up, so we've got a hole here. And we've got another little few holes here. This next coat, I'm really, really going to be filling in little areas and covering up uh, the rocks just where the sand would have built up underneath. Um, but yeah, so hopefully we'll only need two coats. As I said before, this is very thin stuff, so be prepared to put on a few coats. So now we've applied that second coat, we can go ahead and give it a quick dry brush of um, a sandy colour. Uh, as you can tell the sand actually already looks pretty good but I like to give it just a, a dry brush just to get those rocks and that looking a bit better. So I will give them a quick dry brush of Iraqi sand and yeah, we'll be close to the end. Don't be afraid to get um, to get his feet and the bottoms of the trousers. Uh, just gives them a bit of weathering, and makes them look a little bit dirty, a bit grimy. That's what you want, you know. These, especially these uh, LRDG SES, they were out in the in the desert for for long, long periods of time. So there would be incredibly mucky okay now I want to do just a little um, dry brush on the raised bits of um, the sand just to give them a little bit of a, a highlight if you will so I'm going to be using dark sand for that you'll notice it when you're painting this light sandy color so this dark sand is coming out you can just make it out and that's what we want okay we want this we've got the three different colors so we've got the Tamiya um, texture which is a sand colour, we've got the Iraqi sand and now we've got the final layer which is just this dark sand which I'm just capturing the raised edges maybe a little bit on the on the rocks here just to give it a little bit of something just to make some of those raised areas pop out a little bit more And you can just, it's subtle, you can just make it out, which is what you want. You know, and don't be too careful with this. If you get a bit on their boots, a bit on their socks, and that, like I said in the previous um, clip, these guys are in there in, on operations for months at a time. So you could expect they're going to be quite filthy by the time they're finished. Yeah, so that's him done and I'll crack on with the rest of them and see you guys at the next part. Okay, so we're on to the last couple of steps. So let's get some like dead weeds or, or some like plant or something. So in order to do that, I'm just going to use these mountain tufts. They're from uh, Army Painter and I'm not going to put them on all of the bases. I'm just going to put them on a, on a couple. The reason I'm, put, I'm only putting them on a couple is uh, because these guys are in the desert. Um, so anything 
like a plant or animal living is uh, few and far between so we can put a couple of dead ones on there and I'm going to apply that by just putting a dab of super glue on a palette and then grabbing one of these just with my tweezers putting just a touch of super glue on there now for this I'm going to just pick like near a rock or something so just like there for example and then just spread it out a bit there we go Okay, so the very last step is to pick a colour for the sides of the bases. Uh, it's up to you. I like to go depending on the colour. Something similar, but maybe just a little bit darker. So for this, I'm going to go beige brown. But it really is a personal choice. Whatever you want to do, there's no really right or wrong answer. When it comes to the outer edges of the bases, uh, some people might colour code them to reflect different uh, regiments or units that it's in. But it's really up to you. So all you need to do this is just a brush and a steady hand and you can just follow along. Sometimes it might need two coats, just really depends on the colour. But just a nice steady hand. You don't want to muck this part up and just slip or something because you've gone to all the work of um, making it look good, like a desert. So just take your time. Don't rush it. Every part of painting a miniature takes time. Don't rush a any particular part because you'll end up finding that you dislike it or it frustrates you. So as annoying as it is, and this, this part especially, it's like, you know, it's a real need for it to look anything too fancy. But if you make a right mess of it, it's really going to take away from the hours that you've spent painting your miniature and basing it and you're going to be disappointed. So you can see I'm just going real slow and just taking my time. But yeah, you get the gist, so I'll um, fast forward this one and I'll see you at the very end. Okay guys, so that concludes today's uh, desert basing tutorial. I hope it's been of some use. I'll link all of the items that I use in the description below. These models are from Battlefront. They've been heavily converted um, just so to add a bit of variety. Uh, they are Battlefront models just with head swaps and a lot of green stuff, etc. If you have enjoyed this, so the desert basing or just watching some LRDG being um, shown some love, then let me know in the comments. I've got some trucks. I've got a whole load of trucks and SAS Jeeps and stuff that I could paint up. If that's something you want to see, I would really uh, would be fine doing it. I just would uh, like to hear what my subscribers or viewers would like to see. Um, really open to anything. So feel free to um, leave me a comment or message me on Facebook or Instagram. Um, yeah really open to any ideas guys i know there's a lot of awesome youtube um videos out there with some fantastic people that run them so i know we've got most bases covered but always open to new stuff so yeah as i've said a million times over now just let me know in the comments but for today that ends the video um, i'll leave you with a picture of the lrdg trucks if that is something you want to see um, in a future tutorial but other than that Thanks for watching and I will catch you at the next one.